Act three. Is it time for a break or should we finish Act three? Down in. What you say? Well, let's take a break. We are take about half time. We're half time right now. Okay. We will take a short intermission. Okay. 15 or 20 uh, minutes. We'll, we'll be, be back. back. All right. I'll be back. <laughs> There's popcorn at the snack bar. Popcorn at the snack bar. The popcorn and some candy. Go get them. My friend gave me this. I'm going to go make it right now. <laughs> oh, I'm psychic. <laughs> yeah, let's go get some break. I'll be back. Thank you very much. Yes, it, it was. Um, uh, Mickey had been to the studio I think once or twice and she thought it was delightful to be you know amongst us and that sort of thing but she didn't like doing the Zoom yeah yeah. she thought she might uh, stick through this month but she didn't make it would have been nice oh, to well. have her here tonight but you, you gotta oh. have something special to Zoom I know yeah. Well, you're talking uh, about Mickey, huh? I will not say that I have that something special. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mickey's kind of a videographer herself. So Exactly. Uh, Zoom doesn't... Uh, uh, she's not happy with uh, the context of it. She even turned down Linda Castro's classes... Uh, I forget what that group is called, but um, they were doing instruction on theater and that sort of thing via Zoom. She says, I don't like doing this. Let's all meet together. Then we'll do it. So it's getting right down to that close time. We're at tier four. I don't know if there's a tier five, but <laughs> anyway. Oh, well. Okay. I added Mr. Uh, Hamlet in there for the 22nd. We're going to make history. History? His yeah. hysterics? <laughs> well, that too. But that's always the case. But yes. lot, I know lot, we'll want cameras there. I, I well, have the crew. Interesting. It won't be a Zoom kind I'll of meeting. I'll crew that will be following me. I but, see. Uh, just so everybody's comfortable, you know. Okay. We oh, no. Have Get up you know, and stack them. <laughs> <Fly> <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Excuse me for interrupting, but we already are at tier five. We are, and that means <clears throat> seventy-five people can meet indoor. That's all it means. No, there's more. Oh than that. well, that 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 means the entourage. That's beautiful because they didn't know what they were going to do. Yeah, <laughs> but I. Do believe it's six foot distancing, that sort of thing. If they still got still, that. Yeah. Well, that's terrible. And it certainly doesn't require a mask, I hope. Peter does not look good in a mask you know, because he doubles and triples it. So hey, it's sure, fun watching sure hands. But I talk about it. Show hands who's vaccinated. Yes, two vaccinations will get you in, and check your two. fever at the door. <laughs> two, got it. So we just put Lilani <laughs> in the corner with a bag over her head, and we're good to go. <laughs> so That's right. Right. And two two holes Dude, for the I, eyes. I think because we're all vaccinated, if we have one unvaccinated, I guess we're pretty good. I think so Linda is vaccinated. <laughs> we'll take the temperature. <laughs> I, no stigma. I think, no stigma. <laughs> I the think, scarlet uh, letter A. No delta. <laughs> the scarlet delta. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we at Act Three? Yeah. Yeah. Let's crank this up. Yeah, crank it because this one gets pretty tough right now. What? Yeah. You mean it gets harder? Yes. Oh, there's, no. there's military forces running all over the stage. No. 
Yes. <laughs> Military all over the stage. <laughs> well, they <laughs> march across. They march across the stage, and the girls look at them and say, "Oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah, I know him." I don't have a good marching sound effect. I'm bummed <laughs> out. I'm sad. <laughs> No, sir, marching. Yeah, I need one of the, I need one of the, You should do that for about five seconds and no one talk, you know. Track three, scene one. Yes. Florence, the Duke's palace. Enter the Duke of Florence attended the two Frenchmen with a troop of soldiers. And the Duke is all dressed and ready to talk. That's right, that is from Italy. So, from that point, the point, now you heard the fundamental reasons of this war. Whose great decisions have a much blood let forth and more thirst after. Holy seems of the quarrel upon your grace's <laughs> part, black and the fearful on the oppressor. Opposed. Well, therefore, we marvel much our cousin France, you know, would be so just a uh, shot his bosom, oh, against our burning prayers. Good, my lord, the reasons all of our state I cannot yield, uh, but like a common and an outward man, that the great figure of a council frames by a south unable emotion. Uh, therefore, dare not to say I will that I think of it, uh, since I have found myself in my un uncertain grounds to fail as often as I guessed. So oh, be it this pleasure. But I am sure the younger of our nature that surfeit on their ease will day by day come here for physic. Oh, welcome now shall they be, because uh, and all the, the uh, honors that can fly from us shall on them settle. You know your place as well. Uh, we better fall for your avails they fell. Uh, tomorrow, uh, to the field. Scene two, Rossillon, the Count Pallet. Enter Countess and Cloud. It hath happened all as I would have had it. Say that he comes not along with her. Be my troth, I take my young lord to be a very uh, melancholy man. By what observance, I pray you? Well, we will look upon his boot and sing, mend the rough, and sing, ask questions and sing, pick his teeth and sing. Uh, I know a man that has this trick of melancholy, sold a goodly manner for a song. Let me see what he writes and when he means to come. I have no mind uh, to Isabel since I was at court. Our old earlings uh, and our labels uh, is Isabel's uh, in the country are nothing like your Ling and your uh, Isabel's uh, at the court. The brains of my Cupid knocked me out, knocked out, and I begin to live as old man loves money with no stomach. What have we here? Oh, even that uh, you have there. I have sent you a daughter-in-law. She hath recovered the king and undone me. I have wedded her, not bedded her, and sworn to make the knot eternal. You shall hear I am run away. Know it before the report come. If there be breath enough in the world, I will hold a long distance. My duty to you, your unfortunate son, Bertram. This is not well. Rash and unbridled boy, to fly the favors of so good a king, to pluck his indignation on thy head by the misprising of a maid too virtuous for the contempt of the empire. Oh, madam, yonder is heavy news within the be between the two soldiers and my young lady. What is the matter? Nay, nay, there is some comfort in the news, some comfort. Your uh, son will not be killed so soon as I thought he would. Why should he be killed? Well, so say I, madam, if he run away, as I hear he does. The danger is in standing to it. That's the less the loss of man, though it be um, the getting of children. Here they come, we'll tell you more. For my part, I only hear your son was run away. 
Uh, save you, good madam. Madam, my good lord, it's gone. Forever gone. Oh, do not say so. Think upon patience. Pray you, gentlemen, I have felt so many quirks of joy and grief. This is the first of neither on the start. Can woman me unto it? Where is my son, I pray you? Madam, he's gone to serve the Duke of Florence. We met him uh, there the withered, and uh, for thence we came. And after some dispatch in hand at court, thither we bend again. Look on this letter, uh, letter, madam. Here's my passport. When thou cantest get the ring upon my finger, which never shall come off, and show me a child begotten of thy body that I am father to, then call me husband. But in such a den, I write a never. This is a dreadful sentence. Got you this letter, gentlemen? Aye, madam, and for the content's sake, are sorry for our pain. My pretty lady, have a better cheer. If thou engrosses all the griefs are thine, that robs me of a melt moiety. He was my son, but I do wash his name out of my blood, and thou art all my child. Towards Florence is he? Aye, madam. And to be a soldier? Uh, such is his noble purpose, and believe it, uh, the Duke will lay upon him all the honor that good convenience claims. <laughs> Return you hither. Aye, madam, with the swiftest wing of speed. Till I have no wife, I have nothing in France. Tis bitter. Find you that there. Aye, madam. Is but the boldness of his hand. Happily, with his heart, was not contenting to. Nothing in France until he have no wife. There's nothing here that is too good for him. But only she, and she deserves a lord that twenty such rude boys might tend upon and call her hourly mistress. Who was with him? A servant only, and a gentleman, uh, which I have sometime known. Parolles, was it not? I, my good lady, he. A very tainted fellow, and full of wickedness. My son corrupts a well-derived nature with his inducement. Indeed, good lady, the fellow has a deal of that too much which holds him to have. You are welcome, gentlemen. I will entreat you, when you see my son, to tell him that his sword can never win the honor that he loses. Moral entreat you, written to bear along. We serve you, madam, and in that your worthiest affairs. Not so, but as we change our courtesies, will you draw near? Till I have no wife, I have nothing in France. Nothing in France until he has no wife. Thou shalt have none, Rosaline, none in France. Then hast, hast thou all again, poor Lord, is I that chased thee from thy country and exposed those tender limbs of thine to the event of the non-sparing war? And is it I that drive thee from the sportive court where thou wast shot with and with fair eyes to be the mark of smoky muskets? Or you laden messengers that Ride upon the violent speed of fire, fly with false aim, move the da, new move the still peering air that sings with piercing. Do not touch my lord. Whoever shoots at him, I set him there. Whoever charges on his forward breast, I am the caitiff that do hold him to it. And though I kill him not, I am the cause. His death was so effected, better to where I met the raven lion where he roared with sharp constraint of hunger, better to where that all the mis miseries which nature owes were mine at once. No, come thou home, Brazilian, whence honor be but of danger wins a scar. As oft it loses all, I will be gone. My being here is 
that holds the hands. Shall I stay here too, dude? No, no, although the air of paradise did fend the house and angels of fear of office, all I will be gone. That pitiful rumor may report my flight to consolate thine ear come night and day. For with the dark poor thief, I will steal away. Scene three, Florence, before the Duke's palace. Enter the Duke of Florence. Bertram, uh-huh. soldiers, drum, and trumpets. <laughs> our general of our horse, <laughs> and we... Great in our hope, Herr, lay our best love and our credence upon the promising fortune. Sir, it is a charge too heavy for my strength, but yet we'll strive to bear it for your worthy sake to the extreme edge of hazard. Then uh, go thou forth, and fortune play upon thy prosperous helm as thy uh, auspicious mistress. This very day, great Mars, I put myself into thy fire. Make me but like my faults, and I shall prove a lover of thy drum, hater of love. Scene four, Roussillon, the Count Palace, and to the Countess and Steward. Alas, and would you take the letter of her? Might you not know she would do as she has done? By sending me a letter? Read it again. I am St. Jacques Pilgrim, thither born. Ambitious love hath so in me offended that barefoot plod I the cold ground upon. <clears throat> With sainted vow, my fault to have it amended. Right, right, that from the bloody course of war, my dearest master, your dear son, may hide. Bless him at home in peace, whilst I from far his name with zealous fervor sanctify, his taken labors bid me him forgive. I, his despiteful Juno, sent him forth from courtly friends, with camping foes to live, a death and danger dogs the heels of worth. He is too good and fair for death and me, whom I myself embrace to set him free. Ah, what sharp stings are in her mildest words. Ronaldo, you did never lack advice so much as letting her pass so. Had I spoke with her, I would have well diverted her intents, which thus she hath prevented. Pardon me, madam. If I had given you this at overnight, you might have been o'er pain, and yet she writes. Pursuit would be but in vain. What angel shall bless this unworthy husband? He cannot thrive unless her prayers, whom heaven delights to hear and loves to grant, reprieve him from the wrath of greatest justice. Write, write, Rinaldo, to this unworthy husband of his wife. Let every word weigh heavy of her worth that he does weigh too light. My greatest grief, though little did he do feel it, set down sharply. Dispatch the most convenient messenger. When happily he shall hear that she is gone, he will return. And hope I may that she, hearing so much, will speed her foot again, led hither by pure love. Which of them both is dearest to me? I have no skill and sense to make distinction. Provide this messenger. My heart is heavy and mine age is weak. Grief would have tears and sorrow bids me speak. Scene five, Florence, without the walls, a tucket far off. <coughs> Enter an old widow of Florence, Diana, Violenta, and Mariana, with other citizens. Nay, come, for if they do approach the city, we shall lose all the sights. They say in the French count has done most honorable service. It is reported that he has taken their greatest commander 
and that with his own hand he slew the duke's brother. Uh -oh. We have lost our labor. They are gone a country away. Hawk, you may know by their trumpets. Come, let's return again and suffice ourselves with a report of it. Well, Diana, take heed of this French earl. The honorable maid is her name, and no legacy is so rich as honesty. I have told my neighbor how you have been solicited by a gentleman of his companion. I know that knave. Hang him. One Parolis, a filthy officer. He is in what those suggestions for the young earl. Beware of them, Diana. Their promises, enticements, oaths, tokens, and all those engines of lust are not the things they go under. Many a maid hath been seduced by them, and the misery is. Example, that so terrible shows in the rack of maidenhood cannot for all that dissuade succession, but that they are lim limed with the twigs that threatens them. I hope I need not to advise you further. But I hope your own grace will keep you where you are, though there were no further dangers known, but the modesty which is so lost. You shall need, not need to fear me. I hope so. Look, here comes a pilgrim. I know she will lie at my house. Thither they send one another. I'll question her. God save you, pilgrim. Whither? Are you bound to St. Jack like Grand? Where do the palmers lodge? I do beseech you. Oh, at the St. Francis here beside the port. Is this the way? Aye, Mary, tis. Hark you, they come this way. If you will tarry, holy pilgrim, but till the troops come by, I will conduct you where you shall be lodged. The rather, for I think I know your hostess as ample as myself. Is it yourself? If you shall please so, Pilgrim. I thank you and will stay upon your leisure. You came, I think, from France? I did so. Here! You shall see a countryman of yours that hath done worthy servant. His name, I pray you. Is the Count Rosilion? Know you such one? Uh, but by the year that hears most nobly of him, his face I know not. Well, whatsoever he is, he's bravely taken here. He's stolen from France, and is reported for the king have married him against his liking. Think you it is so? I surely mirror the truth. I know his lady. There is a gentleman that serves the, the count, reports but coarsely of her. What's his name? Monsieur Parolus. Oh, I believe with him. In argument of praise or to the worth of the great count himself, she is too mean to have her name repeated, all her deserving. Is it a reserved honesty, and that I have not heard examined? Oh, alas, poor lady. It is a hard bondage to become the wife of a detesting old lord. I want good creature. Wheresoever she is, her heart weighs sadly. This young maid might do her a shrewd turn, if she please. How do you mean? Maybe the amorous count solicits her in the unlawful purpose? He does, indeed, and brokes with all that can in such a suit corrupt the tender honor of a maid. But she is armed for him and keeps her guard in honest Defense. Do, 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 do. Forbid else. So now they come. <laughs> that that is Antonio. 
the Duke's eldest son, that big chastless. Which uh, is the Frenchman? Oh, uh, hmm. That one with the with the plume. Tis a most gallant fellow. I would he loved his wife. If he were honester, he would make the war so a uh, goodlier. He's not a handsome gentleman. I like him well. Now it is pity he is not honest. Yon might that same knave that lead him to these places. Were I his lady, I would poison that my rascal. Which is he? That jackanapes with the scar? Why is he melancholy? Perchance his heart I the battle? Lose our drum! Well... It surely ducks at something. Look, his spite on us. Mary, hang you! And your curtsy for a ring carrier. The troop is past. Come, pilgrim. I will bring you where you shall host of an enjoined penitence. There's four or five to great St. Jacques bound already at my house. I humbly thank you. Please it this my train and this gentle maid to eat with us tonight the charge and thinking shall be for me and to requite your further I will bestow some precepts of this version worthy the note. We'll take thank your kindly. Scene six camp before Florence. Enter Bertram and the two French lords. Nay, good my lord, put him to it and let him have his way. If your lordship finds him not a hilding, hold me no more in your respect. On my life, my lord, a bubble. Do you think I am so far deceived in him? Believe it, my lord, in mine own direct knowledge, without any malice, but to speak of him as my kinsman, he's a most notable coward, an infinite and endless liar, an hourly promise breaker, and the owner of no one good quality worthy of your lordship's entertainment. It were fit you knew him lest reposing too far in his virtue, which he hath not, he might at some great and trusty business in a main danger fail you. I would I knew in what particular action to try him. None better than to let him fetch off his drum, which you heard him so confidently undertake to do. I, with a troop of Florentine, will suddenly surprise him, which I have, whom I am sure, and he knows not from the enemy. And we will bind and hoodwink him so that he can he shall suppose no other but he is carried into the leaguer of that adversaries. When we bring him to hear our own tents, be but your lordship present at his examination. And if he do not, well, for the purpose of his life, and in the highest compulsion and base fear, uh, offer to betray you and deliver all the intelligence in his power against you, and that with the divine forfeit of his soul upon oath. Never trust my judgment in anything. Ho, 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 ho. For the love of laughter, let him fetch his drum. He says he has a strategian for it. When your lordship sees the bottom of his success in it, and to what metal his counterfeit lump of ore will be melted, if you give him not John Drum's entertainment, your inclining cannot be removed. Here he comes. 
Oh, for the love of laughter, and hinder not the humor of his design. Let him fetch off his drum in any hand. <laughs> How now, monsieur? This drum sticks sorely in your disposition. A pox on it. Let it go. Tis but a drum. The but is a drum. Tis but a drum. A drum so lost. There was excellent command to charge in with our force upon our wings and to rend our own soldiers. That was not to be blamed in the command of the servants. It was a disaster of war that Caesar himself could not have prevented if it had been there to command. Well, we cannot greatly condemn our success. Some dishonor we had in the loss of that drum, but it is not to be recovered. It might have been recovered. It might, but it is not now. It is to be recovered, but that the merit of the service is seldom attributed to the true and exact performer. I would have that drum, or another, or hick jacket. Why, if you have a stomach to it, monsieur, if you think your mystery in stratagem can bring this instrument of honor again into his native quarter, be magnanimous in the enterprise and go on. I will grace the attempt for a worthy exploit. If you speed well in it, the duke shall both speak of it and extend to you what further becomes his greatness even to the utmost syllable of your worthiness. By the hand of a soldier, I will undertake it. But you must not now slumber in it. I'll about it this evening, and I will presently pen down my dilemmas, encourage myself in my certainty, put myself into my mortal preparation, and by midnight look to hear further from me. May I be bold to acquaint his grace you are gone about it? I know not what the success will be, my lord, but uh, the attempt I vow. I know thou art valiant, and to the possibility of thy soldiership will subscribe for thee. Farewell. I love not many words. No more than a fish loves water. <laughs> it, it is not this a strange fellow, my lord, that so confidently seems to undertake this business, which he knows is not to be done, and damns himself to do, and dares better to be damned than you to do it. <laughs> you do not know him, my lord as we do. Entertain it is that he will steal himself into a man's favor and for a week escape a great deal of discoveries. But when you find him out, you have him ever after. Why, do you think he will make no deed at all of this? that so seriously he does address himself? None in the world, uh, but to return with an invention and clap upon you two or three probable lies. But we have almost embossed him. You shall see his fall tonight, for indeed he is not for your lordship's respect. We'll make you some with the fox ere we case him. He was first smoked by the old Lord Le Feu when his disguise and he was parted. Tell me what a sprat you find him, which you shall see this very night. I must go look my twigs. He shall be caught. No, so brother, he shall go along with me. And please, your worship, I'll leave you. Now, uh, will I lead you to the house and show you the lass I spoke of? But you say she's honest. That's all the fault. <clears throat> I spoke with her but once and found her wondrous cold. But I sent to her by this same coxcomb that we have in the wind 
tokens and letters which uh, he did resend, and this is all I have done. She's a fair creature. Will you go see her? With all my heart, my lord. Scene 7, Florence, the widow's house. Enter Helena and widow. If you misdoubt me that I am not she, I know not how I shall assure you further, but I shall lose the grounds I work upon. Through my estate befallen, I was well born, nothing acquainted with these businesses, and would not put my reputation now in any staining act. Nor would I wish you. First give me trust. The Count, he is my husband. And what do your sworn counsel I have spoken? Is so from word to word, and then you cannot. By the good aid that I of you shall borrow, or in bestowing it. I should believe you, for you have showed me that which well approves your great in fortune. Take this purse of gold and let me buy your friendly help thus far, which I will overpay and pay again. When I have found it, the count he was your daughter lays down his wanton siege before her beauty. Resolve to carry her, let her in fine consent, as well direct her how tis best to bear it. Now his imp Important blood will naughty deny that she will demand a ring the county worse that um, downward hath succeeded in his house from son to son, some four or five descents. Since the first father wore it, this ring he holds in most rich choice, yet in his idle fire to buy his wealth. It will. It would not seem too dear. However, repented after. Now I see the bottom of your purpose. You see it lawful then. It is no more that, but that your daughter, or she seems as one, desires this ring, appoints him an encounter. In fine delivers me to fill the time, herself most chastely absent after this, to marry her. I will add 3,000 crowns to what is past already. I have yielded. Instruct my daughter how she shall persevere. The time and place with, with this deceit so lawful may prove coherent. Every night she becomes with musics of all sorts and songs composed to her unworthiness. And it nothing it nothing stays us to chide him for our ease from our ease. For he persists as if his life lay on it. Why then tonight let us assay our plot which is which if it speed its wicked meaning in a lawful deed and lawful meaning in a lawful act, where both not sin and yet a sinful fact. But let's about it. Act four, scene one, without the Florentine camp. Enter second French lord with five or six other soldiers in ambush. Gentlemen, gentlemen. He can come no other way but by this hedge. It's corner. Uh, when you sally upon him, speak what terrible language you will. And though you understand it not yourselves, no matter. <laughs> we must not seem to understand him. Unless someone among the among us, whom we must produce for an interpreter. Good captain, uh, let me be the interpreter. <laughs> Very good. Uh, art thou not acquainted with him? Knows he not thy voice? No, sir, I warrant you. Oh, but that Lindsay Woolsey hast thou to speak to us again? 
in such as you speak to me. We must think us some band of strangers in the adversary's entertainment. Now he hath a smack of all neighboring languages. Therefore, we must every one be a man of his own fancy, not to know what we speak to one another. And so we seem to know as to know straight our purpose. <laughs> the Joss language, a gabble enough and good enough. <laughs> as for you, interpreter, you must seem very politic, but couch. Uh, oh, here he comes to beguile two hours in a sleep and then to return and swear the lies that he forges. Ten o'clock. Within these three hours, it will be time enough to go home. What shall I say I have done? It must be a very plausible invention that carries it. They must begin, they begin to smoke me, and disgraces have of late not too often at my door. I find my tongue is too foolhardy, but my heart hath the fear of Mars before it, and of his creatures, not daring to report of my tongue. This is the first truth that e'er thine own tongue was guilty of. What the devil should move me to undertake the recovery of this drum, being not ignorant of the impossibility, and knowing I had no such purpose, I must give myself some hurts and say I got them in exploit. Yet slight ones will not carry it. They will say, came you off with so little? And great ones I do dare not give. Wherefore, what's the instance? Tongue, I must put you into a butter woman's mouth and buy myself another bazarette's mule. If you prattle me into these perils. Is it possible he should know what he is and be that he is? Huh? Is it? I would, the cutting of my garments would serve the turn, or breaking of my Spanish sword. Ah, we cannot afford you so. Or the bearing of my beard and say it was in strategium. It would not do. Or to drown my clothes and say I was stripped. Hardly serve. Though I swore I leaped from the window of the citadel. How deep? Thirty fathoms. Three great O's would scarce make up that which he believed. I would I had any drum of the enemies, I would swear I recovered it. You shall hear one anon. <laughs> A drum now of the enemies. Bracamorus! A largo cargo cargo! Cargo cargo cargo! Cargo cargo cargo! Cargo cargo cargo! Oh, ransom! Ransom! Cargo. Oh, ransom, ransom! Do not hide my eyes! Bosco! Spemundo Bosco! Ay, ay, ay. I know you are the Moscos Regiment, and I shall lose my life for want of language. If there be here German, or Dane, or Low Dutch, um, Italian, or French, let him speak to me. I'll discover that which shall undo the Florentine. Moscus Vavudo, I understand thee, and can speak thy tongue. Mechanic Bumpuser, betake thee to thy faith, for seventeen poniards are at thy bosom. Oh, 
Prej, prej, prej. Manka revanka dulce. Oscar Belivuccia le Colorado. The general is content to spare thee and hoodwinked as thou art will lead thee on to gather from thee happily thou mayest inform something to save thy life. Oh, let me live and all the secrets of our camp I'll show their force, their, their purposes, nay, I'll speak that which you will wonder at. But wilt thou faithfully, if I do not, damn me. Acordolinta, come on, thou art granted space. <laughs> Go tell the Count Rosilian and my brother that we have caught the woodcock and will keep him muffled till we do hear from them. Certain I will. I uh, will that be all unto ourselves. Inform him that. So I will, sir. Go then and tell him I'll keep him dark and safely locked. <laughs> Scene two, Florence, the widow's house. Enter Bertram and Diana. They told me that your name was Fontbell. <laughs> no, my good lord, Diana. Uh, titled goddess and worth it <laughs> with addition. But the fair soul. In your fine frame, hath love no quality? If quick fire of youth light not your mind, you are no mate, but a monument. When you are dead, you should be such a one as you are now, for you are cold and stern. And now you should be as your old, as your mother was when your sweet self was got. Well, she was then honest. So should you be. Oh, no! My mother did but duty such, my lord, as you owe to your wife. No more of that. I really do not strive against my vows. I was compelled to her if I love thee, my love's own sweet constraint, and will forever do thee all right, sir. I. So you serve us till we serve you, but when you have our roses, you barely leave our thorns to prick ourselves and mock us with our bareness. How have I sworn? Oh, well, tis not the many oaths that make the truth, but the plain single vow that is about true. Which or what is not holy that we swear not by? I take the highest to witness. Then pray you tell me, if I should swear by Job's great attributes, I loved you dearly, would you believe my oaths when I did love you ill? This has no holding uh, to swear by him <coughs> when I protest to love that which I will work against him. Therefore, your oaths are words and poor conditions, but unsealed, at least in my opinion. Change it, change it. Be not so holy cool. Love is holy, and my integrity ne'er knew the craft that you do charge men with. Stand no more all, but give thyself unto my sick desire. Who then recover? Say, thou art mine, and ever my love as it begins shall so persevere. I see that men make uh, ropes in it, uh, in such a scar, a scar, that we'll forsake ourselves. Give me that ring. I'll lend it me, my dear, but have no power to give from 
Will you not, my lord? It is an honor longing for a house bequeathed down from many ancestors, which were the greatest obloquy in the world and need to move. Will mine honor such a ring? My chastity is the jewel of our house, bequeathed down from the many ancestors, which were the greatest obloquy in the world in me to lose. Thus, your own proper wisdom brings in the champion honor on my part against your vain assault. Here, take my ring. My house, my honor, yea, my life be thine. And I'll be bid by thee. When, when midnight comes, knock at my chamber window. I'll order a cake my mother shall not hear. Now will I charge you in the hand of truth. When you have conquered yet my yet maiden bed, remain there but an hour. And now speak to me. My reasons are most strong. And you shall know them when back again this ring shall be delivered. And on your finger in the night, I'll put another ring that what in time proceeds may take the token to the future our past deeds. Adieu till then, fail and fail, fail not. You have won a wife of me, though there be my hopes, though there my hope be. Done. A heaven on earth I have won by wooing thee. Hello. For which live long to thank both heaven and me. You may so in the end. My mother told me that just how he would he would won. And if she sat in his heart, she says all men have the like oaths. He has sworn to marry me when his wife's dead. Therefore, I'll lie with him <clears throat> when I am buried. Since Frenchmen are so brave, marry it that will, I live and die a maid. Only in this disguise I think no sin to cousin him that would be unjustly win.